Friends, I found a bug in my coffee this morning. And that makes me very angry. Angry enough to rage! That was a bad joke, but eh, you got it. Welcome to Black Dragon Gaming once again, your home for horrible jokes and all your Pathfinder 1st and 2nd edition content. So, uh... Last week, I may have misinterpreted a request, actually. Uh, we screwed up a request last week. What with all the Gen Con videos coming down, I have a bad habit of just kind of looking over and being like, ah, yes, this. That is what it says on Discord. Hurrah. Wasn't supposed to be a dwarf, dragon-blooded sorcerer, no, but we're going to fix it today by request of your Gorilla King, Mr. Levi. Dwarf, dragon instinct, barbarian... That makes more sense. And it's also one that I'm pretty stoked about because the Barbarian was a class that I thought was really bad in the playtest. The Barbarian has definitely been redeemed in second edition and it has a tool in its toolbox that I was interested to see if it would come out as a good or bad or waste of time or trap kind of thing. Today we'll put it to the test and see if it's worth anything. But of course, if you're liking what you're seeing, like, subscribe, ding the bell. Today, this episode of Mid-Maxing for Fun and Profit was brought to you in part by Mr. Josh King, who unfortunately, in the near future, it looks like, will be dropping out of Age of Ashes due to a new work schedule. But I've had that happen with patrons in the past. They'd need to drop, and then suddenly my Patreon would drop with them. I want to shout out this man's for not only getting me all the shiny stuff that I'm using or will soon be using, but also keeping his patronage at the highest tier so other people can play in his place. Thank you, my friend. Now, let's hit it. So over the course of the Pathfinder playtest, the Barbarian was one of the classes that saw the most changes. Originally, you'd rage for three rounds and then be fatigued for a round, have that proverbial shields down round, eventually going to a flat check, a sort of mini game to see how long you would rage. That's the first thing I want to bring up today. The mechanic is just better now. The Barbarian was one of the hardest hitting classes of first edition and a part of that was because there come a point towards the middle of the game where you had so many rounds of Barbarian Rage that it became just arbitrary, you always had the biggest scariest thing moving. Now, for one action if you aren't fatigued or raging, your rage lasts 10 rounds, 1 minute. After you stop raging, you can't rage again for one minute. That's much much better than feeling like you have to end the combat in 3 rounds or suddenly you're easier to crit. And right there, my biggest problem with the Barbarian is fixed. The combat ends. Basically, you just need to wait a minute in the room where the combat happened. I think everybody can allow that to happen. I think it's more than fair. Let your Barbarians catch their breath, kids. They're gonna blow a capillary. Well, let's get right down to business on this one. Our ancestry will be the dwarf once again. And you know, since we get super angry, I'm just gonna have him pop up and go, and then be done. Call on Ancient Blood will be our heritage. Buffing out our saves is not a bad thing, especially in lower level play. And at level 1, we're shooting for an ability score adjustment of a strength of 18. And to be honest with you, I think that's more important for the Barbarian than anything, not just because that's what we hit with, no duh. But since we're not getting to legendary proficiency on the Barbarian, same for probably the Ranger or anybody else who just gets to master proficiency with weapons. Padding out your strength might mean the difference from hitting and missing, whereas for the Legendary guy it might just be the difference between hitting and critting. Yeah, we all want to crit, but no one wants to miss. Simple concept. Dexterity of 14, Constitution of 16, Intelligence of 12, you'll see why. Wisdom of 10, Charisma of 8. As with our Sorcerer build, our skill feats are entirely your own. So, let's hit the class feed, shall we? Out the gate, we'll take Moment of Clarity, of all things. Yeah, it's a little weird to take this one at first, but for one action, until the end of the turn, you can use actions with the Concentrate trait, even if they don't have the Rage trait, is really big for us later. Now it's kind of just taxi, and you could very well take Sudden Charge and just retrain later. But I can't speak to how much downtime you're gonna have, so who knows. At second level, we will grab the Fighter Dedication. Strength, Dexterity, both at 14, necessary for this one. But that's alright, because the Fighter still has a lot of the clutch class feats that your Marshals want to have. If not for the fact that, well, we're just waiting three levels on for something, we might have once again been a Fighter who went into Barbarian. Next up at feat level 4, it's Reactive Shield. As a reaction, if you would be hit by a strike whilst wielding a shield, we will be, 
you can raise your shield, get that plus two. If that would alter the results of the attack roll, it does. This is pretty good as a reaction. For us though, mostly it's a prereq. Next up, we'll grab Sudden Charge to go ahead and grab our second fighter feat and clear the dedication prereq out so we can become something else. Also, since as a dwarf, we're kind of pokey, being able to get across the battlefield and attack for two actions, striding twice if you end your movement within melee reach of at least one enemy, you can make a strike against the enemy, could be really good for us. At feet level 8, assuming we were able, and of course we were, to raise our intelligence by 2 at level 5, of all the things the Barbarian will be archetyping into, it's the Wizard. We'll grab our Wizard dedication feat here, and basic Wizard spellcasting right after. Why? Because, again, True Strike is really good. Especially for us, going all of our energy into one attack, with Furious Finish as our next feat. We make a strike. If the strike hits, you gain a circumstance bonus to damage equal to the number of rounds remaining in your rage, a maximum of 10. After the strike, your rage immediately ends and you're fatigued until you rest for focus points, basically. It will only be five levels on before, as a barbarian, we're no longer fatigued when our rage ends. And right here, basically, this is where we're online. The level before this, Virtue of one of our class features, we picked up Mighty Rage. A free action that says when you use a rage action on your turn, use an action that has the rage trait, like Furious Finish. Pathfinder 2nd Edition is a very, very modal game. It's like Magic the Gathering, except your hand refills at the beginning of your turn. You have various cards you can play, and optimization and best practices of play are determined entirely by the order in which you play those cards. One line of play will definitely look like spend one action to cast True Strike, Stride, or change grip on weapon to two-handed, or something X, basically, and then Rage, as a free action, use Furious Finish. This will allow us to get all 10 rounds of Rage, or 20, on a critical hit directly into the enemy's jugular, and I'm pretty into that. We take Moment of Clarity for this as well, because there may come a time when you only need an extra 4 or an extra 8 slash 16 depending on how the dice fall and it might be that you're already raging and you need to moment of clarity true strike furious finish it's all about knowing how to sequence your stuff this feels a lot to me like the vital striking barbarian of first edition and i think it's playable since at high level play again since we aren't legendary with that weapon our second and third strikes are probably destined to miss. Ergo, the buff to damage is just looking a little better, in my opinion, than the extra D12s we could be throwing around. Normally, the D12s are better, but again, if we just hit the air, it doesn't matter. Next up, since we do have that Dragon Instinct, and we'll talk more about what that does in the combat math, Dragon's Rage Breath. Breathe in deep, exhale a powerful cone in a 30-foot cone or 60-foot line that deals a d6 of elemental damage per level. With a basic reflex save, using of all the things in the world your strength, that being what your class's key ability score is, so that's weird. You can choose whatever dragon you want to choose. The fire things are vulnerable to cold, the cold things are vulnerable to fire, the plants are vulnerable to fire, dragons are immune to their breath weapon type. Other than that, there's no real good way to hose you, short of like the red dragon having to fight a bunch of devils. But moving on, it's quick shield block. Our next fighter feat, giving us an extra reaction that we can only use to block with our shield. I feel like this build will spend a lot of its time moving back and forth between I have a bastard sword in one hand and a shield in the other, and now my shield is broken and I need to switch, so I'm going to go with D12s, or I'm setting up for the Furious finish, so I've dropped my shield willingly, and now I have a bunch of D12s to throw at you. That said, when we're raging, we're hurting our AC, making it easier for us to be critically hit. The shield is still basically the ring of protection. I would not go without it, and if we're going to be in the front line, and if we're going to expect to take damage, it seems reasonable to get that shield up and to have an extra reaction with which to block. Second to last, Brutal Critical. Easy peasy, an extra d12 when we crit. Last but not least, Expert Wizard Spellcasting to buff up our ability to cast spells and things, give us a little bit of versatility. On the off chance, we get caught with our shields down and we just need to be in the back doing something other than getting mad and swinging a sword. 
For our ancestry feats, we will take Unburdened Iron, moving a little faster in that medium armor right off, and then Vengeful Hatred. We're not super worried about the enemy that we would choose because that's very situational and not good for optimization, of course. The one we like is, in addition, if a creature critically succeeds in an attack against you and deals damage, you gain a bonus to damage against that creature for a minute, this one being a plus one circumstance, or a circumstance bonus equal to the number of damage dice that our weapons dealing for 10 whole rounds for the whole combat. This won't stack with the enormous buff that we're getting from Furious Finish, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Probably our best choice of the dwarf feats right now, unless you really want to know stuff about dwarf stuff. Anyway, halfling luck, guiding luck, because rerolls are important. Mountain stoutness is last, because even more hit points. Remember that patronage at any tier will get you a Google Sheet with this build. But I'll tell you now, at 20th level, looking at 373 hit points. That's a big number. But to our general feats, friends, there's one feat that we really like that we haven't had the chance to take yet, but we are taking it at level 3 here, Shield Block. All classes are proficient with shields, only some of them can block with their shield, everyone can raise a shield. As a reaction, when you have your shield raised and you would take damage from a physical attack, you snap your shield into place to ward off that blow. Your shield prevents you from taking an amount of damage up to the shield's hardness. You and the shield each take any remaining damage, possibly breaking or destroying the shield. Pathfinder 2nd Edition can be explosive, especially when something crits you. Yeah, that might cause your shield to break horribly, but I think that's better than, like, your body breaking horribly. Anyway, adopted ancestry for the halflings, canny acumen, this time for reflex, then toughness and die hard so you don't die a miserable death, basically. So the really cool thing about the dragon instinct is that when you rage, you increase your damage that you would gain from rage from plus two to plus four, and that damage type changes to the element of the dragon from which the instinct springs. Specialization will eventually take that to a total of 16. At the end of the day, with our apex item, we're looking at a strength of 24, a dex of 18, constitution of 20, Intelligence of 16, Wisdom of 16, and Charisma still of 8. At level 20, with a strength score of 24, with that sweet, sweet, sweet Apex item, that means we could be swinging with all of our runes running at a 36 to hit. Of course, that definitely still means we need an 18 to hit this guy, but making him flat-footed could knock that down to a 16. The more and more I think about it, the more and more I think that, well, Hmm, maybe we all just should build fighters. Legendary is really nice. So when we clobber in the Tree Razor, if we hit 4d12, averaging 26 from the Bastard Sword, we've gone to two-handed to try to finish out Furiously, plus six from Greater Weapon Specialization, 10 more from Furious Finish and 10 rounds of Rage, plus seven from our Strength, plus 16, 65 damage on average. If we critical, it's a different story, because Brutal Critical's tacking on an extra die. Thought about using a pick for this to optimize around Fatal, but to be honest with you, 5d12 is just kind of terrifying. That's 33 on average. Double that around a bunch, double all the other things, it's 144 damage on average. Or should we stick that natural 20 on Tree Razor around 26% of his health on average, remember, in one shot. 198 is the max damage, and in that universe where you stick that many 12s at once, that's 36% of Tree Razor's health in one go. And remember, Tree Razor is the apex predator. Against things that are smaller, like his minions, who are probably like CR 1920, you smash them. Once again, especially because we never land at legendary proficiency, yeah, you know, I think Furious Finish is totally playable. Those other attacks weren't really going to hit anyway, short of you getting super lucky. Not bad. Not bad at all. And we have other options for large groups of things with our breath weapon, and we're very modal. But that's all the time we have today, my friends. I, for one, am very glad the Barbarian is no longer a horrible class like it used to be, as it is one of my favorites on flavor, and I'm definitely looking forward to playing one of them at some point in 2nd edition. But what do you guys think? How many things have you one-shot with your Barbarians in Pathfinder 1st or 2nd Edition? What do you want me to build next? Throw it in the comments. 
Next week, we've got another patron request going back to one of my favorite playtest builds. Gonna get real resilient next week with the Fighter Cleric. See you then.